everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a stingray. So, let's get arting. All right, so here is the stingray. Um, I have it a little off kilter. So one way to to add, um, you know, motion or movement is to turn it slightly. If you add that little bit of off kilter, it gives that illusion to us that it's moving. And I thought that might be a cool thing to do. Um, so stingray, it's pretty straightforward, right? They don't have hair, so it's all um, just that skin. They're gray on top, white underneath, um, and then they have the little tail spike. Um, so yeah, there's different kind of rays, uh, stingrays. So I don't actually know what this kind is called. I think it starts with a P. Either way, you know, even though they don't have fur, I'm gonna just do the same thing. I'm gonna um, layer up the lines, but I don't have to worry about how long they are. I'm going to be following the contour of the body down. And just like usual, right, curving in can help with an edge. Um, and then I'm going to try and follow the contour with the lines themselves. So as he gets to the little flappy part, you know, I'm going to be pulling that out a little bit more. Right, so it's coming down and then I'm fanning it out. And they're gray and not black, so that means on the gray I don't have to hold back pin pressure when I'm um, adding the highlights and shadows, which is also nice. I'm going to bring this almost straight down. I'm going to curve it just a little bit to get to that top part because this is where the white's kicking in underneath. And again, pulling that in, even though I'm fanning it up, it's just going to help with the edge. It really does. Now the transitions from the white into the gray aren't perfect, right? It's not a, a completely like clean line, so that also helps too in that we don't have to be um, completely static with that line there. There's some flexibility. And since the, the head kind of bulges, that's why I'm looping this out before I'm fanning it forward because it bulges and then it goes into like a flatter section. I keep, as a side note, I keep gesturing with my hands, but um, the camera's not on me, so you can't really see me doing that, so I don't know why I keep trying to do that. I'm, I talk with my hands a lot. It doesn't really, doesn't really work when, when you can't see me do it. Same thing on this side, just reversing that right, like we're bringing it over, following that edge. Now their eyes, at least on this type of stingray, their eyes kind of bulge out a little bit. Organic looping before we swoosh it. When I was first looking at the composition, I was originally going to do it just from looking, you know, above straight down. But, you know, as often as possible, I want to create portraits that are a little bit more engaging. Um, and while that one probably would have been fine, um, you know, always thinking about how I can make it more so. How do I make it so that it's, you know, resonates a little bit more. Um, so my, I went through several iterations of this composition. As, as simple as it seems, I went through several iterations before I was happy with how it looked. Um, you know, don't be afraid to like draw something to sketch it and then to, to change your mind part way through, right? Like, if you have a better idea or a better composition that you think will work better for what you're trying to do, um, don't be afraid to change it. Or you can always draw it again. Sometimes I've found going back and revisiting old drawings and drawing them again, I have a better understanding of that you know animal because I've done it before. So that subject, it's a little easier to do because I understand more about it. I understand you know how it how it looks, the different you know features it might have. Now I'm bringing in a little bit of gray to the underside of some of these fins um, because it sort of rounds away, right? So I think that might be seen. And then the tail, of course, or the little tail. Yeah, I guess the little spiky thing. Although I guess the tail has the spiky thing and is itself not the spiky thing. Okay, now we're going to do white 
Okay, so I'm gonna kind of loop this in before I really start pulling it in. I want this to look like it's a gentle transition under. And then, you know, I have here the edges of its mouth. Even though we don't see the full, you know, ray smile that they have. I thought it would still be cool to kind of show it a little bit. And the light source coming from above. You usually don't do that unless it's um, something like this where it's a, uh, you know, in the ocean. Presumably that's where the light source would be coming. My hesitation with that is I'm not, um, it's, in, it's interesting when you're doing shadows and highlights. I'm not as familiar as doing a light source straight above, so I have to put a little bit more thought into it. But it should allow um, some good shadows popping up on this side as it goes into the tip of his little fin, some highlights kicking back in, and then all, all underneath would be in shadow. It's possible these little fins here would be picking up some highlight as a silhouette since the light's coming in straight up. It's probably going to be picking up some. Um, there's probably going to be some silhouetting right around, you know, the tips before it's, it's in shadow. So, just going to get started. I know usually I say all edges are in uh, shadow, but that does depend on the light source. So with the light source coming straight from above, you know, this upper edge may not be in shadow. And I'm going to draw it as if it's not. Right, and it's just full pin pressure. I'm just filling it in. I'm going to have a little bit of shadowing as I get to this looped section, because in theory he's going to be, that lip's going to be looping away, and the white will kick in. Some of the trick here is making sure that the white appears white, um, and not gray as the color, as the highlight transitions. Some of that may be more obvious on the opposite side, but I'm hoping I can make it very clear on this one. And we may try, um, which I've done before, sometimes I have failed at it. <laughs> um, I may try adding in some like, you know, water slash light reflections on its back. Um, I have done it successfully occasionally and sometimes I have not. So I don't know if it'll work, but it's probably a good opportunity to do it again. See how it does. I tried it on uh, the turtle I did and it didn't work then, but I have done it successfully on like the, the whale and some others, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so as we come to this side, we're going to be going a bit into shadow because his head, if it's coming straight from above, right, like his head sort of looped away here, which means some of this side will be in shadow. I'm going to do the shadows right, I'm just lessening my pin pressure. And then I'll, I'll need to um, taper in the highlight because this will this transition is going to be too harsh. But that's why I like to shadow, um, give myself extra space. It gives me more wiggle room to transition that. And like I said, some of this, this edge is probably going to be catching highlight, but I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing in shadow just to kind of get my feet under me. I'm going to do just that little bit of an edge. It might be a little bit of light coming and then fading it. Something on this side and then fading it quickly. Surprisingly, I think you can kind of see a smile, which I didn't know would come through so nicely. 
since I only have the two little edges of the hooks. I keep wanting to call these flap flaps. Huh. These little flap flaps. Now I am being a bit more careful on the edges here. I know I've mentioned it before, too. You know, don't feel bad if you're weak on one side or have to shift yourself. I often shift my position. I'm doing it a bit more on this one because of um, the nature of the uh, drawing the ray and making sure his lines are nice and clean. Um, so, you know, inevitably that some of that's just muscle, me muscle memory where it's weaker. Um, so don't feel bad if you have to do that. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I just got used to twisting paper because I learned digital art a little later. So I got used to turning my paper. And because of that, I never learned how to draw and build up the muscle memory in certain directions. And so as a result, I end up twisting and turning in my chair. It doesn't always have to be quite as extreme as what I'm doing this time, but it's because the lines are a little cleaner you know, I'm not dealing with fur coming right up to the edge, so I'm trying to be careful on that edge, which is making me shift a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to add just a little bit. I'm going to put it on a different layer in case I don't like it. Just a little bit of white. So the part of the reason for this, too, right, is, you know, his little... Let's call it a flat flap again. <laughs> this little, um, uh, fin. You know, it's kind of partly sticking up too, right? Like it's kind of tipping up. It's still underneath, but um, some of that might be splashing over. Since it's on the side of the light source, he's kind of turned that way. So some of this might, some of the light from above would potentially be splashing over here. I'm going to do that and then fade it into shadow. Yeah, I think that catches nicely. Looks like it's coming up, catching the light, and then going underneath them. Maybe a little bit on this side, but only on that side. Only this little strip, this edge, because everything else would be turned away. And now I'm gonna do his little stinger and fix some of this on his head. I left him with some weird bulge where the stinger's coming up. I'm just going to taper that off. I see about leaving the eyes in place, but in this case the gray now needs to be black. Let's actually pop this over. Bring that down. Yeah, I'll take that off for now, or lighten it maybe. It doesn't need as much. Their eyes, I don't know. Wiped up they are. Maybe that's just too much. So like I said, I've tried this before um, to varying results. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a matter of just kind of getting the impression that water's reflecting on top, and I'm going to do that by squiggling my lines. I want this to seem natural. And if this is too much, I can back off too. There's several different ways that I can do this. I think this could work on him, but I just need to do it right. And it would only be in the areas that are highlighted, so once we start getting into these shadows, would taper off. Also a bit too much being overzealous with my lines here. Let's just leave it subtle. Probably better. Okay. Now let's build it up just a little bit more. Otherwise I like the subtleness of it. I'm going to change the way that I'm doing the lines here. Since now we have the base, we're just going to squiggle it. 
squiggle it a little differently. Still squiggling it, but not quite as deeply as I was before, basically. Might come under here to the white. Not fade the smile, but taper it a little bit more. It's hard to do because it's already kind of tapered a little. Like there's a recess here. Just a little bit. Not a lot, but I guess I guess that works. All right. All right. So that is how you draw a stingray. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye -bye.